it's Mermaid Phantom from TheMagicCrafter.com. I'm going to do a much requested tutorial and that is how to wear a wig while you're swimming or in the water. Because if you just wear a wig, you stick it on your head, it's gonna fall off because I've done that. Like a million times. It just creates drag and everything just whoosh, right off. So I'm gonna show you how to keep a wig on your head while you're swimming in the water. You can use this for cosplay, you can use it for mermaiding, you can just use it if you want to wear a wig in the water, <laughs> whatever. I'm going to show you how to do it. Here is what we'll need. You will need your wig, obviously. Mine's a little messy looking because it's my designated water wig. Um, I also wear it on land too, but I recommend that you have a wig that you use just for the water and you don't mind getting kind of wrecked because mine's like bunched up a little bit. Once they get in the water, they're not as easy to brush and I don't recommend brushing them because every time you wear them in the water, they'll get messy. So it's better just let them do their thing. You need your wig cap. Mine's one of those ones you just fit like right over your head. You'll see it in a bit. It's like this. You will need some hair ties. I am using three small ones today and one really old big one. Additionally, you will need a comb or brush. I'm going to be using a comb and it happens to match my tail. You're also going to need some hair bobby pin things. Look like, oh shoot, I keep dropping them. They look like this. You can see them on my pale skin. <laughs> and lastly, you are going to need a lot of patience. Just in practice, patience and practice. Just, it takes a while, you'll get there. Oh, and I do want to add that you will need long enough hair to pull back. Doesn't need to be super long, just long enough to like pull back and braid and everything. You'll see. Let's get started. First, you want to make sure that nobody's going to call you on your phone because then you will get interrupted. Then, you want to make sure that you divide your hair into three parts. You're going to have a section in front of each ear, and then a bigger section you're going to pull back into a ponytail behind your head. I'm going to get started with this side here. Doesn't need to be perfectly even or anything. And I'm going to <laughs> take this strand here and I'm going to stick it in my mouth after I brush it out. This is how I divide them. You can find your own technique. I just kind of get some chunks. Always make sure your hair is clean before doing this. Yeah. Next step is going to be where the patience really pays off. Take one of your side chunks and you're going to kind of brush it at a diagonal, like sort of back towards your head. We're going to create braids and we want the braids to be going back here. You want to braid it while you're going back. You don't want to braid it down like this because then you're going to have like an awkward lump right here. So, um, it kind of sounds weird, but you'll see what I'm doing. This takes patience, as I said, and it might be a good idea to have your uh, other hair ties within arm's reach. I'm not the best at braiding. This doesn't need to look beautiful. Just go with it. Like I said, patience. And now just take your one hair tie and kind of tie that off the end. My braid doesn't go very far back, which is okay. Um, I just couldn't really see what I was doing because I have a giant bright light in my face and a tiny little display screen to look at and bad vision. Not a good combo. Ugh. So you just tie that back and now you're gonna let that goofy braid hang. It's gonna get pulled back and don't worry, nobody's going to see it. I promise you. Now we're gonna do that with the other side. Remember, make sure to braid it back kind of at an angle back towards your head, not frontwards. You're gonna look really weird for a couple of minutes. I like to call this the Helga look. Sorry for anyone whose name is Helga. There's nothing wrong with the name, it's just what I think I would be called if I looked like this. It's actually kind of a pretty name. I kinda wish I was named Helga. Okay, anyways. I find that this side of my head is a lot harder to braid because it's like my left hand has to do most of the work.
feel like this makes the little tiny bones in my wrist feel funny. Once you have this one done, you're gonna get your other little scrunchy hair tie thingy, little miniature ones, what I like to use. And you just take the uh, end of that and tie it off. That's what you wanna call it. I am obviously not a hairstylist. I mean, if you wanna walk around like this, that is, that is your uh, personal choice. You do you. I'm not going to do this, although I have. So I guess actually I will. Anyways, ideally your braids should be like braided down to the same length, but if not, it's okay, don't fret. Okay. Next, you're going to take your braids, or whatever the heck you call this, and you're going to pull them back to meet your ponytail in the back. And you're going to take your last hair tie, or if you wanna use more, that's your choice, and you're going to tie them all together. Make sure this is a tight tie sort of thing so they all just like get stuck. Um, it is definitely best to have this braid meeting down here with the other braid, like braided all the way down here, if that makes sense. Um, I'm not going in the water today because it's winter, so like I don't really care. <laughs> but do your personal best. All right, now you're going to be rocking this beautiful style. Gorgeous, huh? And if you think this looks weird, it's about to get worse. Grab your wig cap, and you're going to slide it over your head. Mine goes like this. I put it on my neck. I keep this thicker elastic side down, if yours has that this piece right here. And then I pull my ponytail thingy up a little bit, just so I can get it out from the wig cap. Pull this up, it smells like seaweed. Pull it over my ears, up on my head. Um, since my hair has gotten longer, I just kind of have to pull it up like this, so I have this really awesome style. <laughs> and um, let your ears come free. Just gonna let them go. There we go. Now you should look like this. Here comes the next step. Okay, before you put your wig on, I want you to kind of feel where your braids are. Mine are like right here. What we're going to do is put the wig on and then we're going to take the bobby pins and stab it through the wig and through your braids. Braids are like an anchor and your wig is the boat. No, your braids are the rock. The wig is your boat and the bobby pins are your anchors. Grab your wig. And mine is a Gothic Lolita wig um, from Daleks.com. I have a review video of this wig and a few other videos of this wig. Don't mind how messy it looks. This thing is like four years old, maybe five years old. I've lost count. It's gorgeous still in comparison to most wigs and I love it. And I have another one that's brand new that I'll wear eventually, but mine has teeth, things in the front. Uh, I highly recommend Gothic Lolita wigs for this reason. They have these things here. Um, there's one down here too, for the tag. If yours doesn't have that, it's not a big deal, but this really helps keep your wig on a little more. I'm gonna put this on. Lately this wig's been giving me some issues getting on just because I think it's old and doesn't wanna work anymore. It's like, nope, I'm done with you. I've done my time. So stick your wig on. And I like to snap the back piece on mine, like these little things here. I like to put them, tie them together, uh, which is the piece that's been giving me issues lately. I think it's like getting worn out on my wig because I use this thing so much. Um, there, there goes it unsnapped. Once it's together, it doesn't unsnap. Like when it stays, it just decides to stay. But when it's like not in place, it's like, I'm gonna give you some problems, lady. Come on. Are you done? I think it's done. All right, get your wig on, adjust it how you want it to look. Uh, I throw mine over my shoulders because this wig is so puffy. Looks a little funny otherwise. Um, I'm using artificial lighting so it looks probably pretty shiny. 
and it's silver. It's just beautiful. Doesn't the makeup look better with this wig on? I think it does. All right, this next part is probably my least favorite part because it tires out my arms after a while and it's kind of a guessing game. Uh, what you want are bobby pins that are similar to your wig's color. I don't really have many that are similar to mine's color because, well, I do, they're silver. But I have like a mix of ones. It doesn't really matter to me, but if you were wearing a bright red wig and you have neon green bobby pins, then like that's gonna show on camera most likely. Uh, so you might want to stick with something close to the color of your wig, but yeah. So you're going to need a lot of these. Make sure you have a lot. Have a whole bunch of packets at home if you plan on swimming in your wig a lot. Because you will lose a few, unfortunately. I've lost a few and there's actually a few videos. I'll link one of them somewhere around here where you can see the bobby pins falling out of my head if you look closely enough. But if you don't, you'll never know. So take this. Kind of part your wig a little bit. It has something called wefts in it, which you can kind of stab through. And take your fingers and feel for where your braid's at. Mine's right about here. And what we're going to do is stab through your wig and wrap and push the bobby pin underneath your braid and over your braid. So you split it in half. So it's like kind of biting your braid through your wig. And you want to do that all the way along your braid with at least like 20 bobby pins. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that. Put some on the back, put some towards the front. I even like to sometimes clip some bobby pins like on the sides here and attach it to my wig cap. And if I can, if my braid's like down low enough to my braid. And then occasionally I'll stick some right on the top of my wig just because I feel like it adds some extra security. <laughs> And I'm just going to go along and add in a bunch of bobby pins. Sometimes you might poke your scalp a little bit. It's okay. You can take the pain. You're tough. This is all in the name of cosplay and mermaiding. Don't use the wimpy flimsy ones, by the way. This one's wimpy and flimsy. It's not going to do much. You want metal. When you are all done, have probably at least like 15 to 20 bobby pins in your hair. Your wig might show a little bit of the pins, like you can see this one. Kids who see you in the water aren't going to be looking that closely and if they see them, they probably aren't going to ask about them because they're going to be staring at your tail, let's get real. So this is what it's going to look like. And of course, the thicker the wig you have, the more hidden the bobby pins will be. Um, now let's do a little test here. See if it'll stay on my head, okay? Can you see this? Let's zoom out. Is that a zoom does it goes? That grandfather clock is getting on my nerves. Here we go. This is also great if you want to be a rock star. So yeah, I have gone swimming countless times in Lake Michigan using this technique in very rough waters uh, and my wig has never fallen off my head once. There, well, if you watch some of my videos, you will see some videos where my wig does fall off. Those are times when I did not use this technique. And uh, there is a time when I was using this technique where it almost came off and it was sliding around, but that's because I was in a rush and I didn't use very many bobby pins. You can watch that video right here. It's actually one of my favorite videos. It was one of the most disastrous swims, but it turned it out. Turned in. But it turned out being one of my favorite videos, like, of all time. So yeah, if you want to look at it, you can. Anyways, I hope this helped you figure out how to keep your beautiful, luscious wig on your head while you go swimming or while you're partying like a rock star. <laughs> um, I found this very, very helpful, and, like, it totally takes my mermaid look to the next level because... My regular hair is quite thin and just, ugh, I don't like my real hair. No, thin and frizzy. But this wig, it may look a little frizzy today, 
but it is beautiful in the water and I love it so much. Uh, again, I recommend Gothic Lolita wigs or Daleks.com. Again, there's a review video of my wig from when it wasn't quite as brutally just, I don't know, not destroyed, but just tortured. <laughs> So I'll link a bunch of videos in the description if you want to look at them, and I also have them in the cards. And if you guys want to subscribe to this channel, it would mean a ton to me. Please let me know if you have any other questions regarding swimming with things or like mermaid stuff or mermaid stuff, <laughs> wig stuff, whatever. Just let me know, drop me a comment, send me a message on Instagram. I look at them all. I don't always reply to them all, but I do look at them. So yeah. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and if you know someone who could really use this video, please share it with them. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks to the many people who suggested it. Have a magical day. Mm -hmm.